All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to talk about different type of oil filters, what's available. Uh, the three main, uh, three oil filters that I see a lot. There's other ones out there on the market. Uh, these are the most popular that I see all the time. There's the general type, which is this style here. This one's used that I took out of a job, a general filter. That's a model A1, 1A, I'm sorry, 1A. Um, there's different type of cartridges that can go in there. There's regular, you know, white fiber cartridges like this, like cellulose type that I use. And they do make like a uh, felt one for, for the general. Um, this is the F4. Hello, let me see. Right here. Our F4. F4 filter is the one that I use mostly. This cartridge is bigger. Okay, it's taller and it's bigger around. I'll take them out and I'll show them to you. And there's also um, the GABA type screw on filter like they have on a car. I'm going to tell you the pros and cons on these and why I like them and why I don't. Okay. First of all, the GABA, it's like a GABA F4 filter, it screws on. This one here, you know, it's got an arrow. You'd, you'd come from the tank into here. You'd have a shut off. This one has a, a, the ability for a gauge to put a gauge on it. <clears throat> now, when you take this thing apart, best thing to do is, you know, you got to shut your oil off. You better off to crack this and let air in through here to be able to take this off. Just like a whole house filter you would do to relieve the vacuum. Because if not, these things can be really hard to get off. All right, and then you'd unscrew this. I'm not a big fan of this filter. I wouldn't put this filter in on my house. Um, there's a rubber gasket that goes in here. You can see this rubber O-ring that goes in there. And then this is like a car filter, but these holes are bigger. And you can see down inside there, this is where... How these filters work is they come in, okay, and all the sediment goes on the outside. Then it gets filtered up through, and it goes to the burner. So what I found with these is, you'll find that the top of this gets all full, all full of muck and schmag right here. All the top gets blocked. This whole top gets blocked, and there's no, it's not getting. The, the, there's no room for the schmag to get down through these holes. These holes aren't that big. Um, sometimes this stuff's pretty nasty with oil. So this is good, in my opinion. This is good for like a secondary filter. So you get a bad situation where, you know, um, you, you get a lot of sediment in one filter. You put this as a backup. A lot of the guys will do that, like on the Riello, because they got a small screen and a pump. Okay, so that's the GABA screw one filter. You know, if these are there, I'll, you know, replace the cartridge, but I'm not a big fan of those. These general filters right here, they're, uh, the general filters... Which is a smaller cartridge. Let me take one of these out and I'll show you guys. Okay, it's got a gasket. And it's got a cartridge here. You know, obviously the oil would... would this would go down inside there and the gasket goes in there. Um, there's a little bleeder right here. And it also comes with a gasket for the screw and for this. I'm not going to take this one apart because this one, this one's a used one and it's all full of schmag. I'm sure, you know, that gasket would go there. And there's also a gasket that goes under the bleeder. So if you want, you know, once you change the gasket, you can turn the oil on and bleed all the air through here and you're ready to rock and roll. Uh, a lot of times I'll reuse those gaskets if they're, um, if they're okay or I'll double them up, the fiber gaskets. All right, and then on the F4, which is the most common that I like because it's got more area here for schmag and oil is a nasty fuel sometimes it's very very bad uh, i loosened this one up before before the video here but you can see you know you got a pretty good area for you got a pretty good area there for um you know sediment to get in there and i you know some jobs i go to this is full of muck so the muck would go down around the side and then filter through and then back up there's a spring inside there to hold it in the center. There's a spring that holds that. That spring's not there. When you put this in, this won't line up. When you put the top on, if it's not lined up, it could leak by, you know. And all these all have an in and an out. I've got to put it in the right way. 
you know, the oil comes in this way. This one's a little rusty for some reason. It's brand new. I don't know why, but... So the end comes in here. See? It just dump, it dumps right inside here. Then it gets filtered that way. And the same thing. You got a, gas, a rubber gasket that goes in here. Here's the rubber gasket right here. And taking these apart, what you want to do is... This one's got the bleeder on the top. There, you see it? When you're taking these apart, what you want to do is you want to crack this. Take a screwdriver and pry it right here. You never, you never want to hit this with a hammer, the top of this, because you could break it right off the oil tank and flood the flood the basement. I've <laughs> I've done that before stupidly. Uh, hit this and the bloody thing breaks off, and now you gotta you gotta get that nipple out of there, get the vacuum out, get the nipple out before you flood the bloody place. Yeah, you're always better off to loosen this. Get a screwdriver. Pop it, and then this bottom will come off. Start hitting nothing on an old tank. Not a good idea. So that's it. So that's the F4. The F1. You can tell the difference in size. Can you see the difference in size? So obviously the F4 is going to be able to hold more muck than the, uh, the F1 can. There ain't no doubt about that. And like, I just told you what the problem was with this one, why I don't like it. Um, is it easy to change? No, it's not. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's really, really hard to get this sucker off a lot of times. I really struggle with them. Uh, I really struggle with getting them off. You know, to collapse the whole thing, and I got a special wrench on there, and I got a good wrench. But, man, I'll tell you, I really have a hard time with them. But the mother... Some of the three most common. Obviously, uh, General makes other ones that are that are uh, pretty good also. Um, that are bigger than this. I got another one in the garage like this also. Uh, it's not that common, but these are the three most common oil filters for oil tanks. Alright guys, here's another filter. That's a it's an even bigger one. But this is a general style filter right here, but this is a big one. It's definitely a lot bigger than the, uh, here's the model right here, model 99. This is bigger than the F4, but this takes a special filter. I think I got these in the truck, but I had this one in my garage. I don't see this one too often. This is if you really get a bad, bad case of sludge in a tank, you put something like this in. Um, this is a rare breed right here. If you have a problem with a lot of sludge in the bottom of the tank. You're better off changing the tank, but if you don't do that, you could always um, go with an oil line in the top of the tank and then come off like four inches off the bottom of the tank with the oil line. You'd be always be cleaning, you know, picking up clean oil. They also go what they call a snorkel gauge, which is, um, it goes down on a fill gauge. There's a tube that goes on a fill gauge, so it's always picking up oil off the, off the top of the tank where the gauge is. It's called a snorkel gauge. You could always use that if you got a problem with with sludge. Uh, but this is I just figured to throw this in. This is just another. Um, I had this in my little garage area. I got so I got all kinds of pots and stuff in here, with circulators and some of my old vacuum pumps, the old JBs. These are these are good pumps, man. I had these for years. I, I switched over to the new style, but. These pumps were great. These, but they just started leaking out of these um these little vacuum these uh little ports here. They leak out a little bit, bouncing around in the truck. But I had them in two two vacuum pumps for years. I don't know, probably like I don't know, 17 years or so in the truck. Long time. This is just some of the stuff I got in my garage. It needs a good good flip and clean. But I got racks and. Uh, just put all my stuff here in the, in the garage and pecs, pecs tubing, heat and pecs. You know, the, the orange, that's for heat, heat pecs. And the blue stuff would be for water, but I got all, you know, contactors and 0015 circulators and I got contactors, hot surface igniters, sequences. Uh, you know, this is kind of like my area where I put all kinds of extra stuff that I get in gloves. Why do you wear gloves? By, by the cases, you know. Got two cases there. I got, I got three cases here. Three cases here. Why do you wear gloves? I cannot understand it. Could never understand why you'd wear gloves. 
And I got, uh, I got more stuff on the other side. I got a bunch of old cars in here. Well, we're going to do some, some some videos on my cars come summertime. Uh, I got more stuff over there. I got AC up on the top there and just blows in a little five-ton unit in my garage. I just backed my truck in here. And I, it's good. I don't know if you can believe it or not. We're getting more snow. It's like crazy shit. But, uh... Yeah, I got more space over there. I st put stuff. Mostly, I uh, keep everything in my truck. So everything goes in my truck. Alright, guys. One other thing that I want to talk about, guys, is this epoxy that I use a lot. This is really good stuff. Let me see if I can get a... This epoxy right here. I use this a lot. Um, I use this temporarily, like if a cast iron pipe might have, might have a rod hole in it over the weekend or something. Um, it comes two parts. What I usually do is I usually take a shingle, like a wooden shingle, and uh, I'll squish part A and part B onto the shingle. I'll mix it up with this little spatula here. And uh, the stuff goes on. It comes out kind of like a thick toothpaste. And um, obviously you could reuse this stuff. You can take these covers off and reuse it. You know, once you put it on there, you put the equal amount on both sides and you mix it up with this little... This little thing here, like I said, I usually use a uh, uh, shingle, wooden shingle, and I put this stuff on, whatever you're going to use, and this stuff hardens up. This is really, really good stuff, really good stuff, and it kind of goes on nice, and you can kind of form it, and uh, once it dries, it's really good. Like I said, I use this on cast iron a lot, so if, I, if, I'm, if I'm at a house and uh, the bottom of the cast iron has a rot hole in it, and every time they use the water, it's leaking into the wall, and... It's over the weekend or something, or it's on that main stack, and it's going to be a while till I can get there. I'll, uh, I'll throw a patch on it like this and uh, until I can get there and cut it out and do it properly. But, you know, I do have stuff in really, really hard areas and on plumbing, on uh, cast iron plumbing that's got this stuff. It's been in there for, for 15 years, and it's still holding fine. A lot of times, like, um, you know, the cast iron will rot out in one spot, like on a fitting up on the second floor. Um, you know, and there's a hole, there's a flipping hole in a pipe that's, every time you flush the water, it's blown right out. Um, I've used this, put a couple of coats of this stuff on there, and, uh, that sucker's buried in the wall. If not, they're gonna rip the whole stack out, you know, three floors type of thing. And, um, this stuff does work, you know. Some, you, you gotta use it sparingly, and, you know, sometimes uh, it's just temporary, other times, you know, you could do a fix with it. I'm get them by for another another six months or a year until they can save up some money until they can replace the whole stack type of thing. You know, everybody's got you know money to uh, to burn and and uh, change things instantly. You know, everybody thinks, oh my God, you're a hack. You would do something like that. Well, if the guy ain't got the money to pay, uh, you know, five thousand dollars to redo the whole stack or three thousand, whatever it's gonna cost, and uh, you know, he's going through a divorce and. Uh, he wants to just get the water to stop leaking in the slip of wall. What do you do? It's a, it's a decision call. I use this in different different times uh, for different situations. Uh, it will get you out of a jam. I just figured I'd mention that. Um, it's really good stuff. I carry it in the truck, and I use this on occasion. Um, definitely worth getting getting a couple. I think I got three boxes in the truck, and you know I might not use it for six months, but when I need it, it's there. That's epoxy. Uh, you could use it for whatever you want to use it for. I wouldn't use it for anything that were a lot of pressure, but you know, like a drain or something like that, it's fine. I never use it on a P PVC drain. I've used it on cast iron a lot, but it says right here it works on PVC. CPVC, marble, concrete, porcelain, glass, brick, hard rubber, wood, ABS. So you can use it on plastic. Uh, lead, cast iron, copper, aluminum, brass. Used for plumbing, leaking pipes, tanks, flange elbows. You know, it goes on and on and on. What you can use it for toilet, ceramic tiles, tubs, sinks. So it gets you out of a jam. Heating and cooling coils, I don't know about that. Duckwork seal. This shit, once this shit hardens, you ain't gonna be able to, it's not like mastic, guys. Once this shit hardens, marine, 
show up all kinds of different things. See if I get it to a spot where you can read the whole thing at one time. I don't know if you can or not. I'll leave it there for a second. I'll give you guys a little time to read it. Alright guys, just a little quick video on some stuff and uh, I really recommend this stuff. I has got me out of a lot of jams. Stuff's got me out of a lot of jams.